Good morning and welcome to News at 10 on Rajya Sabha TV. I am Ashwarya Kapoor. Let us begin the bulletin with the headlines. Fire in nearly 70% of forested area in Uttarakhand brought under control, says NDRF. Special forces walk around the clock as hopes of an expected rain bring in cheer. CBI to question former Air Chief SP Thyagi in the Augusta Westland scam. Defence Minister to present detailed chronology of scam before Parliament on 4th of May. President wraps up two nation tour to Papua, New Guinea and New, New Zealand. India signs a deal with New Zealand to open doors for direct flight between two countries to boost tourism and trade. Manrega workers in Latehar in Jharkhand write letter to Prime Minister Modi, donate 5 rupees each. Unique protest against centre's decision to increase Manrega wage by 5 rupees in the state. And US Secretary of State in Geneva to hold talks over Syria ceasefire. This as Aleppo becomes testimony to crumbling peace process with 250 killed in 10 days. Well, beginning the bulletin with the latest in the Augusta Westland VVIP chopper scam and the CBI will question former Air Chief SP Tyagi today in connection with the probe into the alleged corruption in the deal. The investigating agency had registered a case against Tyagi along with 13 others, including his cousins and European middlemen in the case. It has already questioned several bureaucrats, including former Cabinet Secretary B.K. Chaturvedi and Controller and Auditor General Shashikan Sharma, who was then the Defence Secretary and the then SPG chief uh, B.V. Vanchu in the case. Meanwhile, the CBI on Saturday questioned a former IAF deputy chief J.S. Gujral uh, for over eight hours. CBI has uh, so far maintained that uh, Gujral, who was a procurement chief in Indian Air Force in 2005, was questioned as a witness in 2013, but was uh, tight-lipped on whether he retains the same status. On the other hand, Defence Minister Manohar Parikar has said that he will place all the facts uh, with the detailed chronology about the controversial uh, chopper deal before Parliament on 4th of May. He has uh, also challenged the Congress to show proof on uh, the order that it had uh, blacklisted the company. The UPA has three helicopters up. जो सिक्योरिटी मनी थी वो जब्त कर लिया मुकदमा किया और सीबीआई की इंक्वायरी बैठा ली लेकिन ब्लैक लिस्टेड किया उसको और मोदी जी की सरकार ने आके तो ये बताएं कि इसमें कितना ब्राइब लेके उसको ब्लैक लिस्ट से हटाया ये भी बताना चाहिए ना परिकर साहब को वो यही डिफेंस मिनिस्टर हैं या मोदी जी प्रधानमंत्री हैं उनको बताना चाहिए अगर उन्होंने ब्लैक लिस्ट किया था तो अभी इन इमोशनल ब्लैकमेल करने की जरूरत है नहीं देश को क्योंकि इन्होंने जितने भी ये तर्क दे रहे हैं जितने भी ये तथ्य दे रहे हैं वो कहीं ना कहीं कंट्रडिक्टी भी हैं कंफ्यूजिंग भी है और पूरी तरह से तथ्यों से कोसो दूर है well, moving on in the bulletin now, President Pradam Mukherjee has wrapped up his 60 official visit to Papua New Guinea and New Zealand, where he met top leaders of the two countries and inked a few important deals as a part of India's Act East policy. Now, concluding the three-day visit to New Zealand as part of the second leg of his two-nation tour, Mukherjee talked about cooperation in agriculture, dairy, food processing, education and skill development, as well as high technology between the two countries. During the course of the visit, India and New Zealand also signed a deal that opens the door for direct flights between the two countries with an aim uh, to boost tourism and trade sectors. While addressing the business leaders of uh, India New Zealand Business uh, Council, Mukherjee invited them to India to contribute towards various programs launched by the government. He also went on to say that without dissent, the parliamentary system becomes dysfunctional. He underlined that uh, fierce debates and discussions in the House contribute to taking decisions on important matters like economy in the country. I'm glad that we are today signing an air service agreement between our two countries. This will serve to provide the easier connectivity that has inhibited both business travel and people-to-people -people contact in the past. 
to take our trade and economic relationship to the next level, a priority for my government is concluding a free trade agreement uh, with India. I believe an FTA would be a win-win for both countries. India has huge ambitions to improve their industry and we want to partner with them on achieving just this. And uh, moving on uh, to uh, news on Uttarakhand uh, fire. And according to the latest uh, satellite imageries of the state, the forest fire in the state has gone out in over 70% of the affected areas. Now, the NDRF, the Air Force and the other state forces are working round the clock to tackle the massive blaze. Now, a central team is also in the state to assess the situation. And the possibility of rain has given hope after the fire gutted over 2,000 hectares of uh, forested land and damaged uh, wildlife as well. However, political blame game over the blaze continues. तकरीबन हमने जो कल एरियल रेकी भी करी है, उसमें हमें तमाम सारे पहाड़ी इलाकों में, पहाड़ी चोटियों पे खूब जंगल फायर दिखाई पड़ा है। तो ये कहना बड़ा मुश्किल है कि कितना बड़ा इलाका है, पर ये है कि तकरीबन पूरे इलाके में धुंध छाई हुई है, और तमाम सारी जगहों पे जंगल में फायर हमने the operations in charge of the IAF to douse the raging fire in the Uttarakhand forests, painting a grim picture of the task ahead on Sunday. But more than 6,100 personnel and three IAF choppers fitted with Bambi buckets to carry water have ensured that 70% of that fire has been contained. Considerable decrease in uh, fire incidents from 427, barely three, four days back. Now it has come down to 150, 160. And hopefully we should uh, reduce it to further 50 or 60 uh, in, in a day or two. Apart from the NDRF, the personnel tasked with the fight against the fire include the SDRF, state police, forest staff and volunteers. Uh, ever since we got to know and we have been requested by the state government, we deployed three teams of NDRF. At, uh, in three districts. Uh, today we worked in 14 different uh, locations. A four-member central team of experts including Special Director Centre for Fire Explosives and Director of Delhi Fire Services Arun Uttarakhand to assess the situation and suggest possible remedies. I am Mantri Karyale, Grah Mantri, Raksha Mantri and Air Force and Sabka Sahyog are hai. Home Minister Rajnath Singh also reviewed the situation with top officials of the state and assured all assistance. 1233 1,800 the fire that has destroyed 2,269 hectares of forested land has also claimed seven lives so far. This is a cycle. In 2012, a cycle came in 2012. One was growing a lot of cold. And in the jungle, the pine needles are growing a lot. So these are two reasons. And there are some shrati tattu that are growing. Amidst the gloom is a ray of hope of rainfall in the coming days. If you talk about the Uttarakhand, Tomorrow there may be the isolated type of precipitations and it will increase thereafter, I mean uh, day after tomorrow's. And similarly we are expecting some of the precipitation, light precipitation over adjoining plains over Punjab, Haryana, Chandigarh, Delhi regions. And due to under the influence of this precipitation, temperature will fall gradually by 2 to 4 degrees over this region. The already heated political atmosphere in the state has been brought to a boil by this fire. <laughs> लगभग 2270 हेक्टेयर या 5500 एकड़ से अधिक जंगल पूरी तरह से आग में नष्ट हो चुका है जिसमें गढ़वाल रीजन में 1040 हेक्टेयर और कुमाऊं रीजन में 672 हेक्टेयर है इसके अलावा और बड़ी त्रासदी और दुर्भाग्य की बात यह है कि जंगल जीवों का जो हैबिटेट है लगभग 600 हेक्टेयर वो भी आग से जलकर पूरी तरह नष्ट हो चुका है 73% ऑफ द एरिया इन द स्टेट इज अंडर फॉरेस्ट कवर नाउ द डिफिकल्टी इज दैट देयर इज अ लैक ऑफ प्लानिंग ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट टू मीट सच एन इवेंचुअलिटी यू सी फॉर एवरीथिंग वी हैव टू डिपेंड ऑन सेंटर दैट्स नॉट गुड बिकॉज़ वी हैव वी हैव अ गवर्नमेंट द गवर्नमेंट शुड हैव अ फुल प्लान टू मीट सच एन इवेंचुअलिटी 
The centre has said that it is taking the incident very seriously and that it will study the reasons behind such major fires and prepare an action plan accordingly. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has set the poll pitch in Uttar Pradesh. He launched an 8,000 crore rupee scheme in Balia in the state on Sunday to provide 5 crore free LPG connections to poor families. During the event, uh, Prime Minister Modi attacked previous governments for not doing much despite many Prime Ministers being elected from the state. The Prime Minister asserted uh, that poverty can be eradicated if uh, poor are empowered. They're given resources and opportunities as well as education, jobs, houses, drinking water and electricity. Later, the Prime Minister reached out to the Nishad community while launching e-boats and e-rickshaws in the parliamentary constituency Varanasi. Modi said that the centre will allocate tremendous resources to Uttar Pradesh. इतने सालों में तेरा करोड़ परिवारों को रसोई गैस मिला सिर्फ तेरा करोड़ परिवारों को करीब 60 साल में मेरे भाइयों बहनों हमने एक साल में तीन करोड़ से ज्यादा परिवारों को रसोई का गैस दे दिया मेरे सभी मछुआरे भाई बहनों को ये ई बोर्ड की शुभ भेंट देते हुए बहुत ही गर्व महसूस कर रहा हूं लेकिन मेरी अपेक्षा है पैसे बहुत बचने वाले हैं इन पैसों का उपयोग बच्चों के लिए करना इन पैसों का उपयोग बच्चों की पढ़ाई के लिए करना Moving on now, more than 300 rural families employed in the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme in Jharkhand's Latehar have donated their small annual wage increase to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. While the workers attached five rupee notes to a letter addressed to the Prime Minister that was posted on May Day, the centre has increased Jharkhand Manrega labourers' wage from 162 rupees to 167 rupees a day, a mere five rupees hike. Whereas the minimum wage for labour and non-Manrega work is uh, 212 rupees. Now the Ministry of Rural Development notified the revised rates on 29th of uh, March this year, making the scheme wage 167 rupees per day in Charkhand, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, and Chhattisgarh. Now similar protests will be seen, according to the workers, unless Prime Minister Modi himself intervenes. नरेगा का जो काम चल रहा था या नरेगा कानून है उस कानून के तहत हम लोग को काम मजदूरों को मिल नहीं पा रहा है और जो है कि जो नरेगा में कुछ कुछ मजदूर काम भी मिल रहा है तो मतलब हम लोग को मजदूरी कम आया है इसके चलते हम लोग पांच रुपया नरेंद्र नरेंद्र मोदी को हम लोग आपस कर रहे हैं इस साल में नरेगा मजदूरी सिर्फ पांच रुपया बढ़ाया गया पहले पिछले साल एक सौ बासठ रुपया था अभी एक सौ सरसठ पहुंच गया है जबकि कहा जाता है कि दुनिया में भारत का आर्थिक व्यवस्था सबसे तेज बढ़ रहा है जो लगभग सही भी है उसके बावजूद भी नरेगा की मजदूरी नहीं बढ़ रहा है ये एक बड़ा अन्याय है Big story coming in from Gujarat, where the government there has issued the ordinance providing 10% reservation for the economically backward among the upper caste. The ordinance comes two days after it announced the politically sensitive measure. Well, the ordinance grants a 10% reservation to economically weaker people from unreserved category whose annual family income does not exceed 6 lakh rupees. Now, this is apart uh, from uh, the policy for uh, the reservation for SCST and SEBC, which was being followed by the state government. The government stated that such reservation shall not be applied in the matters of promotion or for the post, which is single in any cadre or grade. The announcement uh, came against the backdrop of uh, reverses uh, suffered by the BJP in its uh, civic polls and also uh, the aggressive uh, Partidar agitation ahead of the assembly elections, which are slated and next year, that is 2017. And in news at uh, 10, we'll take a very short break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to India's World.
They have no sense of institutional memory as far as, you know, relations with countries are concerned. The ability of the Chinese to inflict the damage on you today, unfortunately, is far more. The government felt that uh, it was high time that we sent some signals to China uh, in the wake of their constant, constant uh, slapping uh, the, on our face that they do. Watch experts debate Uyghur visa issue in India's world on Rajya Sabha Television. News from the national capital. Well, the impact of the shortage of 27,000 diesel-run taxis in Delhi is expected to be felt today as it is the first working day following the Supreme Court ban. The apex court had refused to extend the deadline for converting diesel-run taxis into the CNG mode as the traffic police and Delhi government's transport department launched a crackdown against the violators. Commuters find it difficult to book taxis through app-based aggregators like Ola and Uber. Well, amid the shortage of taxis, Uber brought back the controversial surge pricing a day after the odd-even car rationing scheme came to an end. According to the Delhi Transport Department, about 60,000 taxis are registered in the national capital, of which 27,000 run on diesel. Around 2,000 diesel-run taxis had converted into the CNG mode in the last two months. The Supreme Court order is, however, not applicable to cabs having all India permits. नई गाड़ी खरीदने वाले को रोक लगाई जाए पुरानी गाड़ियों जिस आदमी ने जो किस्तों पे गाड़ी खरीदी हुई है वो तो चलनी चाहिए ना वो उसने अपना घर गिर भी रख के या कोई भी वो करके अपना गाड़ी खरीदा है तो अपने बच्चों का पेट पाल रहा है तो वो कहाँ जाएगा अगर आपको बंद करनी थी हमें साल छः महीने या दो, दो साल का तीन साल का कम से कम टाइम दिया आप डीजल गाड़ियाँ बंद कीजिए हमारे को कोई दिक्कत नहीं है लेकिन जितना हमारे साल परमिट हमको दिया गया कम से कम हमारी परमिट चलना चाहिए सबसे बड़ा प्रॉब्लम ये है कि डीजल गाड़ियों में सी किट नहीं लग सकती नो एट कोचेज फॉर द डेली फैजाबाद एक्सप्रेस गॉट डी इन हापुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश ऑन संडे इवनिंग नियरली फोर्टी पीपल है इंजर्ड एंड नो कैजीज है डी रेलमेंट अकड बिटवीन गर्मुक्तेश्वर एंड Kankathar uh, station of uh, the Muradabad division of the Northern Railways. Now, accident relief uh, trains were dispatched to the site from Delhi as well as Muradabad. The coaches that derailed uh, were at the rear end of the train. The unaffected coaches of the train left for the destination uh, later at night. The route of uh, 39 trains were diverted and eight others were cancelled due to the traffic caused by the derailment. And let's uh, bring you some weather updates. Well, several states in the country continue to reel under heat wave and severe drought conditions that have destroyed crops, killed livestock and have claimed at least 300 lives so far. According to the Met Department, Bihar will continue to reel under extended spell of heat wave with the Gaya touching a maximum temperature of 42.9 degrees Celsius as recorded on Sunday. The national capital faced an unpleasant uh, weather condition as well where the maximum temperature was recorded at 42 degrees which is uh, three notches above normal. Whereas uh, Paluri in uh, Jodhpur district of Rajasthan touched a uh, maximum of uh, 46.5 degrees Celsius followed by Barmir at uh, 45.2 degrees, Sri Gangangnagar at uh, 46.3 cel degrees Celsius and Bikaner at 45.8 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, as predicted by the Met Department, parts of West Bengal witnessed rain showers and thunderstorms, uh, which came as a relief uh, from 40 degrees and above temperatures. Along with the West Bengal, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and Odisha also witnessed mild showers. <laughs> और थोड़ा पानी होने से अच्छा होता इतनी ज्यादा धूप पड़ रही है कि हम लोग अभी आए हैं पांच मिनट में वापस ही जा रहे हैं और घूमने के लिए आए थे इंडिया गेट और आगे यहाँ जाना था लेकिन बहुत ज्यादा धूप है तो नहीं निकल पा रहे हैं दिन में भैया अंगौछा बांध के ठंडा पानी पी पी के काम का चल रहा है खाना खा ही नहीं जा रहा है बहुत टेम्परेचर हाई हो रहा है हर जगह पानी की व्यवस्था नहीं है 
कायदे से सरकार को हैंड पेप जगह जगह लगाना चाहिए Well, uh, despite that relief, uh, people across India continue to be affected by severe water crisis as the temperatures continue to soar. Residents of uh, Gulbarg district in Karnataka are among the worst affected. The only source of uh, water from Liver uh, Beam uh, has almost vanished. Uh, most of the water bodies or natural resources have dried up, and whatever water is available is unhealthy. Around 10,000 villagers have been affected by water crisis in the region. Uh, most of the locals have uh, moved to other areas. Remember, India is witnessing two straight years of drought, the fourth time in a century. Let's bring you the big international story. And the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is in Geneva to hold talks over Syria ceasefire that has recently broken down, particularly in the besieged city of Aleppo, where nearly 250 people have been killed in the last 10 days. And the U.S. wants the Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's forces to halt their bombardment of Aleppo. and help restore a nationwide ceasefire death destruction and human suffering as syrian government forces intensify their air strikes in the northern city of aleppo telltale signs of ceasefire in tatars with more than 250 civilians killed in Aleppo in the last 10 days in an urgent bid to revive the fallen US Russian brokered ceasefire US Secretary of State John Kerry arrived in Geneva on Sunday the top american diplomat called for russia's help to persuade the assad government to stop the attacks he is due to hold talks with the un envoy to syria stefan de mistura and the saudi and jordanian foreign ministers today So these are critical hours we look for russia's cooperation we obviously look for the regime uh, to listen to russia and to respond to the international communities powerful statement through the un security council it's uh, an entire package uh, the cessation of hostilities the resumption of negotiations and the humanitarian access i mean i think all three of them are being challenged as we speak and i think we have to um, address that <laughs> Aleppo has become the latest flashpoint in the 5 years of fighting in Syria between forces loyal to Syrian president Bashar al-Assad and rebel groups trying to overthrow his regime. The Russian and Syrian government say the Aleppo air strikes are targeting the Nusra front, a jihadist force not party to a ceasefire agreed in February. However, international agencies have warned that intensification of fighting could bring many people closer to a humanitarian disaster in Aleppo. Con profondo dolore le drammatiche notizie provenienti dalla Siria riguardanti la spirale di violenza che continua ad aggravare Once Syria's economic hub Aleppo and its surrounding countryside have suffered some of the worst fighting in a conflict that has killed more than 270,000 people and displaced millions. A new round of UN-backed peace talks is set to start on 10th of May in Geneva. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. News coming in from Iraq where two suicide car bombs are claimed by the Islamic State have killed at least 32 people and wounded 75 others in the center of the southern Iraqi city of Samawa. The first blast was near a local government building and the second one about 60 meters away at a bus station. Well, the death toll is expected to rise. The Islamic State has said that it attacked a gathering of special forces in Uh, Samara with the one car bomb and then blew up a second when the security forces responded to the site. Islamic State uh, holds positions mostly in Sunni areas of the country's north and west, far away from the ma- mainly Shiite southern provinces where Samawa is located. هناك ترابط كبير ما بين الوضع السياسي وما بين الوضع في الجبهات بكل الأحوال الجبهات بحاجة إلى مزيد من الاستقرار السياسي وموقف موحد من قبل القوى السياسية العراقية يعني بعض القوات الأمنية تم استدعائها يعني على مستوى More news from around the world in World Rap. The president of Iran has congratulated voters on electing a record number of women to parliament since before the 1979 Islamic Revolution 
It was uh, President Hassan Rouhani's uh, first reaction to the results of Friday's uh, runoff election in which uh, moderates and reformists uh, won a working majority. The 17 women elected uh, make up 6% of the new cohort of uh, 290 MPs. Only 16 cleric MPs have been voted in. A suicide car bomber has killed two policemen in the southeastern Turkey. The bomb went off outside police headquarters in the southeastern city of Gaziantep near the Syrian border. More than 23 people, some of them civilians, were injured in the early morning explosion. Police later raided the home of a suspected member of this Islamic State group who is believed to have carried out the attack. Colombian police on Sunday announced the capture of an alleged dangerous drug lord described as Peru's most wanted criminal. Gerson Galvez was arrested on Saturday at a shopping center and expelled to Peru less than 24 hours later because he lacked migration papers. He's accused of running a powerful cocaine trafficking gang in the Peruvian port of Calo. His criminal group has also been linked to numerous murders in the area. Well, that's all in this edition of News. Stay tuned as we have Parliament News coming in in both English and Hindi. Thanks for your time.